I've got a brand new Leo Kaiser in, I'll give you a look. So remember the last time I got a big combiner set and said, I definitely don't need any more combiners. Well, you know, if, if there was some kind of like doomsday clock counter days since Ben said he doesn't need any more combiners, reset that to zero because we've gone and got another one. Yeah, I went for a Combiner Wars at Leo Kaiser. I've got the tanks as arms. I'm going to talk about this thing because of course I am, because it's not a Combiner, because it's, isn't that what I do? You know, look at my channel through the past two, getting on for three years now, isn't it? It's just Combiner Wars, woo! And everything else kind of gets sidelined. I've hardly talked about anything from Time's Return, have I? Like, I haven't even, have, I've done any reviews from Time's Return? I, I did like Rumble. Yeah, okay. I need to get on that. I've got a few ideas. It's like a memo pad thing on my phone that for at least now a year has had two different Titans Return review ideas on there that I always look at and go, oh yeah, I'll do that one day. Hmm. Yeah, one day. Uh, but today we're talking about Leo Kaiser because, yeah, why wouldn't I? Why did I buy it? God, it's just more of the same. I've got enough of each of these jet variants now to form a whole combined with just that mold and it's like oh we're at that point are we and i've got four tanks now as well so yeah buying this thing has yeah it's, it's crossed off a lot of that kind of like oh well i've yeah officially got too many of these molds now um but it, it, it's really good it's really good just a quick old tour of the nice big box here because i've kept it here until i had the chance to do a video about it um yeah it's nice, isn't it? Combine Rules box set presentation is some of the best you're going to get from Hasbro. Of course, you know, that's, that's not really saying a lot because it is still just a big square cardboard box and inside is another big square cardboard tray with some plastic on it and it's not like you're getting something really nice with like an inlay like the new Night Warriors sets, but it's a lovely big box with a lovely big bit of art on there. He's spinning some nunchucks. He hasn't got those. Um, big thing on there. Lots of art and pictures and it's all nice and I like how the, the accent colour here is the turquoise teal thing because I'm a sucker for that now I've decided that's my favourite colour in the entire world and I will I will build a combiner that is just turquoise I've got a torso now and like the power of the primes dreadwing and darkwing uh, they're turquoise and they're going to be limbs and there's going to be Moonracer, and she's turquoise, and she's going to be a limb. So it's like, yeah, boy, I'm, I'm going to have me... The, the Turk quest continues into gaining a, a fully teal to turquoise shaded combiner. And I'm going to be like, oh, yeah. So I can already make a small shelf of teal robots. It's just big and it's nice, and you get a big poster that I've actually stuck on my wall, along with the other ones that I've got from similar big Hasbro things, which... Feels a bit wrong because it's a bit like, oh, I've kind of ruined it by sticking blue tack on there and it's going to go a bit funny. Um, but what else are you going to do with the poster? Just what, keep it in the big brown envelope it comes and never look at it? No, you put it on the wall. So, yeah, it's, it's a nice feeling, nice presentation. You know, you open the box, there they all are, sat there looking all nice and shiny and new, and it's like, oh, yeah, this is just a nice feeling of opening a big box full of good robos and then you put them together and they make a nice big robo like this but honestly honestly while this mode has got a lot of presence you know and it's like oh leo kaiser the legendary obscure very rare japanese g1 guy that only exists in that like you have to pay like a grand to get a proper old school leo kaiser these days and it's like yeah that's the only way that it exists i'm getting this box of slightly awkward repaints so i got the box of slightly awkward repaints of course i did yeah, it's okay as a big boy, but honestly, the real goodness of the entire set comes from the presence that each of the individuals have, because they are just so, oh, the decos are just exquisite for Hasbro stuff. Uh, I mean, okay, it's, it's still not exactly like a Takara level paint job, but it's so good, the colours and everything. These decos are so strong on these guys, and... Yeah, just leaves me feeling like, okay, while well, it's a big combiner set, I'm not really getting that much out of the actual combiner. Because of course, yes, while, you know, the torso bit is all Skylinks, and they obviously looked at Skylinks and thought, what the hell do we repaint this combiner mode into? 
everyone's kind of saying it could make a decent Leo Kaiser, maybe, maybe, uh, okay, that's like the best we've got, let's go with that. Um, and they've done that, and each of the limbs are fine. They're, they're, I would say, perfect, you know, in the same vein that some of the, like, what about car limbs are perfectly decent, new, different looks for those characters, you know, they've got the correct deco, they've got the right alt modes, the right alt modes look a little bit different. That's what's going on here. Except for like, you know, an A-list 1984 car, you've got these weirdos, hardly anyone knows, but they just look so good. But then the torso suffers because of course it isn't Leozak and Jalguar, there isn't a plane and a jeep in here, it's just one big turquoise space shuttle that turns into a dinosaur with Deathsaurus's face and they called it Desirous to kind of half reference that and half say no it's not actually Deathsaurus it's a different guy yeah um yeah it's weird you know okay so every robot mode here has a new head he's got the whole face in a cat's face Voltron thing going on up there which I, I do rather like it's like they've just replaced Sky Rain's bottom jaw with another face and that's cool, you know, giving him a Black Panther hat. Um, yeah, it's okay. Would have liked the big yellow stripes on here, you know, because it's like, you can turn him around and just flip everything and try to forget about the big phallic growth that would end up there. Um, you can flip everything around and then he gets the nice big decal wing bits on his chest and that looks right, but then you've got that. Uh, no. So, Leo Kaiser as Leo Kaiser is kind of like, it's okay, it's a big colourful thing, but really, nah boy, I'm here for the individual guys. Starting off with Hellbat. It's called Felbat on the box, obviously they don't want to go sticking the word hell on American toys for some reason, but um, there you go. Hellbat. What a name, what a look. He looks vaguely Batman-y in this kind of grey, dark blue, yellow get up. Dig that. I just, yeah, I, I really like this. The yellow bits here and there just really pop and the grey is a very particular, I want to say a very particular Leo Kaiser shade of grey. It's like when I think of those original guys, it, they have grey bits that are obviously just clearly just some poo grey plastic, but for some reason once you stick like big yellow bits against it, it looks really good. That's like a really nice kind of colour contrast thing going on there. Um, yeah, here's where I can talk about the fact they've all got new heads. And they've all got like, apart from, uh, apart from like Guy Hawk, they've all got like flip out ears and stuff to give you that kind of animalistic vibe. Because of course they haven't got their animal blokes that sit on their chest. They've just got kind of animally head sculpts. Like Hell Bat has got a head that looks like he's wearing a bat hat. A bat hat, yes. Uh, and his ears go in like that to transform him. And he, is that emoting? He's wiggling his ears? I, I don't know. It looks cool though. Bat ears on a mouse platey ninja robot. I like that. They've all got kind of... There's loads of weapons in the box. There's loads of the same of those like skydive air raid double barrel guns. And it's like, just give them to whoever because none of them really have a particular one. Um, but he just looks good without any guns at all. Mainly probably because the guns stop you from seeing these yellow bits on his cuffs that I like. But yeah, Hellbat is just, mm, yeah, it's good. The, the dark blue is ever so slightly metallic. And his jet mode is just, yeah, those wings, man. The badges, the yellow, the orange cockpit. It's such a good look. And the red missiles in there as well. Mm, I like him. This, even though this is a repaint of a figure which I would have now had for... It's nearly three years now. Let's face it, it's nearly three years since like the aerial box came out. <sighs> Man, you know, I've had skydive for so long and I've had this in other forms, but this has to feel like the best one. Just something about the way that they've done that, just yeah, it's, it's the best one. What about the other jet guy then? Oh boy, it's Guy Hawk. This is the campus robot I've ever seen. Look at it, it it's just, he's just bright hot pink all over all over. Um, his knees are the expectant beaks of baby birds. Where do I begin? Um, <laughs> it's just, yeah, certainly um, it could have worked in the 80s. I don't know, something about the, the kind of odd point 
his head ends in as well. It's like it's supposed to be like some assassin. You bright pink, mate. Everyone's going to see you coming. Um, but I guess he's serving up a look, so that's that. <laughs> it's um, it's decent, you know. This mold is such a nice jet guy. But yeah, this guy is a, uh, he's a thing, isn't he? He's a feast for the eyes in some regards. <laughs> um, again, his wings are really nice. Got the silver, utterly every single bit of that is caked in that lovely silver paint you've got the yellow stripes on there and the badges and even like the smaller wings down there are the same and that just feels yeah that's nice i mean put this guy into his jet mode while it is a bright pink jet it does look so slick with all the silver and the yellow stripes and the wings that's just yeah it's just a good look you know it's kind of crazy and weird and very particularly late 80s but still a good look still works. Moving on to the undisputed champ of the set, it's Kill Bison. Of course it's not called Kill Bison because we don't want to use the word kill for a robot that's probably killed lots of people. Um, he's Iron Bison and it's kind of okay but no, you have to... Taking the word kill out of his name just kind of neuters him a bit, you know, he's called Kill Bison. It's like the most metal name ever and here he is being just this big hench guy who I assume must love a good mosh. So it just works. Yeah, his head sculpt is just the best. These big horns that come out the side, that faceplate, properly angry faceplate as well. And uh, if you look closely, you know, he's wearing a cow hat. Um, oh man, Kill Bison is so good. I mean, he's probably, before going into having this set, he's probably my favourite of the, the breast force. I'm glad they called them Destrons over here. Uh, yeah, the, he is my favourite of the guys because he's called Kill Bison and he looks like that. Turns into a big gold tank. Yeah, this is just this is just good. Um, takes the brawl mould and just makes it sing. All of the silver treads, all of the silver bits here and there. Oh, it's so good. You got stripes again. You get like the yellow stripes down the side with the little badges. Such a good look, and the big silver turret as well. Ah, oh, it's, it's making the white balance go crazy. The light isn't really playing very well on him, is it? But he's so shiny, and he's so solid as well. It's not like any version of Brawl you might have that might be all floppy around the midsection. He's he's got it. He's he's got that. He's got that tight crunch. Ah, oh, such a good figure. I just yeah, I love it. I love it. And then you got the other tank guy in drill horn and. I can never escape the few video where he calls him Bob Drillon. That's that's always in my head whenever I look at this. I can't escape that. I will never unhear it. So he's a little bit more subdued, you know, he hasn't got the same sort of shine that Kill Bison works to. He does seem to work with that kind of light grey thing, as a thematic touch. And again, he's got the nice yellow silver stripes that look good. Nice visual accent. He's got a horn that comes out of his head. Give him that kind of, I suppose it's a, it's a rhino vibe with him, isn't it? Um, and he's got something a bit new. He's got a drill. He's got a drill. That kind of it ends up looking a bit awkward because you put it in his hand and you're met with the hollow face of it, which is a bit poo. But that's, that's cool. You know, it's a bit of a mean instrument of disruption there. Um, and you can attach it to his tank mode in one of two ways. So he at least gets a chance to look a bit different all the other tanks because you can have it around the wrong way and it looks a bit more industrial and makes it look a bit more like some massive boring vehicle like what they dug the channel tunnel with or something I don't know but yeah he's again just nice the blue is all vaguely metallic lovely big shiny badges it's just a good look yellow red yeah it's, mm, not a single one of these guys doesn't look really top tier, striking, eye-catching, just bellissimo. It just feels like enough effort has been put into all of these limbs, every single one. I thought Drill Orm would probably be maybe the weakest one. I guess some days he does feel like the weakest one just because Kill Bison owns that mole and, and the Jack guys are nice and Drill Orm's just blue and grey and a little bit more subdued, but he's no less a proper banger of a robot. The best bit about his alt mode is that if you stick the drill on the front, you can kind of arch the turret round and point it down into the floor like it's doing a full 
mole from the Thunderbirds thing. Mm. They thought about that. Or at least I like to think they thought about that, but you know, it's, that's a nice touch. So, moving on to the main event in weirdness of this set. It's Ion Scythe. What is this? <laughs> Who? What? Sorry? Uh, yeah, they, they could have like repainted some Legends guy into Jalgua um, and just stuck him in there and said, oh, there's a, yeah, there's your sixth member of the set. And no, they went and did like this weird like railgun thing uh, that's from the Takara like Arms Micron Prime Star Screen and it makes a bird with like this one Metal Gear eye and like what? Uh, what is this? Why? Why did they pick this? It doesn't even like resemble any of the weapons that Leo Kai is known for using, you know. It, was there a Micron that looked like a pair of nunchucks or vaguely like some kind of handheld melee weapon? No, they picked this thing. It just turns into a sort of claw, gun, blade, shiv, um, and then into like a seagull. Is it supposed to evoke the kind of breastmaster, uh, like little birdie chest emblem thing? I've got nothing here. I mean, okay, at least unlike the actual arms micron things, this wasn't a kit, I didn't have to put it together or put stickers on it. It's all pre-assembled, it's not going to fall apart, things aren't going to peel off. It's perfectly solid and fine, but it's also completely forgettable and utterly unnecessary. So, see ya. So, last and kind of least, even though he's the biggest figure in the set, it's Desorus, the weird Skylinks monster man. Um, yeah, well, I mean, what can I even say? I don't really know quite where they're coming from with this. Obviously, it's just the Skylinks painted so that when it transforms, it looks a bit like Leo's Axe Jet mode. Um, but then it turns into this griffiny dino thing with with deathsaurus's dino head uh or, or rather deathsaurus's dino eyes because all they've done to replace skylinks's head is like the eye section up here um yeah okay it makes him look evil he's got a big gold beaky bit and the teeth and they've kind of painted the inside of his mouth there almost to look like it's like like when he's in a space shuffle mode that's like where you'd walk up to go inside which uh, is kind of a good touch and is a bit weird at the same time. Um, he's got this big fin at the back of his head, which um, was snapped out of the box. Um, I think only the thickness of the paint that's on it is keeping it on around the back of it because you nudge it and it's just like, th th that's most of that has come away. That was broken straight out of the box. So cheers, lads. Thanks for this great piece of design. It's obviously very fragile because look at that. Look how thin it is. Look how little of that is actually attached to the top of his head. All you've got to do is put some force there and there's nothing there to stop it from just snapping. So that's a bit sad and it makes me very wary of handling this thing because of course once you put it into shuttle mode that's like the highest point of it so if you like drop it or you end up like getting it put against another surface in any way you chuck it in a bag and it might rattle around with other bots that could push against that it's just like it's going to come off one day it's going to come off it's going to lose that and like ah. Oh. So yeah, even like in Leo Kai's mode, because that will turn up, at least the way I transform it, that'll be on his back as the most prominent point, unless you put his wings out in this kind of way. You can't even put the thing down on its back because then it will rest on that and snap it off. Uh, but whatever, you know, the particular QC issues with my version aside, although the, um, the flap on his belly always, always comes off for some reason when you try to fold it. Um, yeah, QC issues aside, um, it's okay, you know, the, the Skylink small is really good, isn't it, really? Um, for what it is, it's a crazy thing, it's particularly imaginative and fun. Um, yeah, the, the joints on him are, at least in the limbs, I'd say a little bit tighter than Skylinks. These ones aren't quite so, which is annoying when you're making the legs with the combiner because they just kind of go a bit wibbly. Um, but, you know, listen to that. Yeah, boy. He brings a bit of good click, doesn't he? And he's all covered in like TD turquoise, so can't really go bad in my eyes, at least from a kind of retinal standpoint. Taking in the light from this thing is quite pleasurable, but handling it is a little bit less so, and then thinking about it is even less so because it's like, 
who are you, what are you? Yeah. It's so half-baked, isn't it? You know, it's like, oh, it's kind of Leo Zack. It's kind of Deathsaurus. The black bits, I suppose, are kind of Jalgwa's corpse in there somewhere. Um, but it's none of those things. It's Deserus. The very strange halfway house of dino, like, bossliness. Like, it feels weird that the leader of the team is this bestial, beaky, toothy bloke. Just looks like an angry chicken. <laughs> Whatever, man. It's, uh, Transformers is the fiction. <laughs> yeah. So, Combiner Wars Leo Kaiser. It's a nice thing. Something I'm very happy to have. Yes, I was particularly hesitant about buying it. Especially, you know, when it was announced and everything, it's like, it's just having that name drop at the point wherever you read, like, you just see a headline or something on Twitter or whatever, and you go, Combine it was Leo Kai. And it's like, that arrangement of words just made me very, very excited. And then you look at it, and you see the pictures, and you realise it's all just repaints. It's like, ah, ah, oh well. It's kind of weak, man. But in hand, I can assure you, it's very very good i don't want to go and say oh it's the best one um because i've said that like the last few times i've had one of these sets you know i would still say that the unite warriors baldigus ruination is about the best one the very best one that you can get um this is certainly above average i would say for the at least the hasbro combiner sets you know it's better than the g2 ones it's not just straight up repaints you've got extra stuff going on in here you've got extra guns and new heads and some weird tiny blue bird thing um and it's got that sheen that legendary mystique of just having a leo kaiser name stuck on it this is the very first thing that's been available in the west that hasbro have ever made that has that name on it and to a lot of people i was like i don't know what that is mate yeah. All I know about G1 is like, you know, up to 1991 with the Micro Masters and the Action Masters. That's it, mate. No, it wins. That's, that's it. That's it. That's all, that's all there is. That's all there is. There's nothing else. So, you know, when a, a properly obscure thing like this comes along, that honestly, you've got to have done a bit of homework to know about, you know, really. Like, I wouldn't know that Leo Kaiser exists if it weren't for a few name dropping in one video and me stumbling across the pages on TF Wiki. Um, so, you know, something like this just feels, feels saucy, it feels rare, it feels high-end, feels like you're getting a little bit of that proper collector, just, yeah, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna give you something good, we're gonna give you something you want, something only you gonna know about, you gonna appreciate. You've hit random page on TF Wiki enough times to know what this is. It just feels like a little bit of pandering, even though, of course, for the most part, it's very much not Leo Kaiser, you know, it's wrong, it isn't made of the right arrangement of robots in the torso, and the orc modes are a little bit off, and oh no, they haven't got the breast mask, the partners, and, oh, mm. um, but I don't care, it is the very first release, western wise, or, you know, at least since 19, was it 92 for Leo Kaiser, I don't, I don't know, this is the first toy of Leo Kaiser since the original one, and either you buy the original one and you've got a grand to spare or you buy this one there's no contest this was 80 quid off kapow that's cheaper than it would have been because it's a for some reason it's a platinum set i don't know why it hasn't turned up in toys R Us, has it um and it should be like 130 i think is that right i'm not sure but anyway it was reduced and that made me feel much more happy about getting it because it's like ah uh, yeah you know what it's been a long time since i've had a nice combined set it's been a long time since i've i've at least received one of these molds as the newest figure i've got so i can at least take something from them even though they are repaints but then it's like i got my hands on it all and the new head sculpts and everything and the properly nice paint jobs just yeah, it just destroys all of that. It doesn't matter that this is a box of figures that I have had many times over because they're all just slick, man. They are just good and they honestly feel like, I mean, they, they might not be. I, maybe if I compare them to some of the other stuff, they're probably not, but it feels like it to me that they are the best Hasbro combiners uh, to, to this point. 
you know, because of course Power of the Prime is going to come along and give us loads of new ones and Dinobots and random guys and whatever the hell else is going to turn up in that line. Like Inferno, what? what? Um, but this was certainly fueled by some of that, you know, staring at pictures of stuff like Dreadwind and Jazz and thinking I could really, really do with some new combiners now, even though they are repaints, because some of that weird kind of vogue that bleeds through from the future about new figures that are going to come out and like looking at like Dreadwind and realising it's just a repaint. It's just like one of these again. Um, but because it's being shown off as that new thing, that lovely shiny new thing, it's like, oh yes, I must go and buy something of equivalence uh, and go and buy another repaint of that figure, which would feel a little bit like me buying that Dreadwind. Uh, and so I went and got this up. The inner imaginations of my mind are an enigma. All in all, at the end of the day, Leo Kaiser is bloody good. And um, yeah, maybe you would like one. Maybe I've just sold you on it. I don't know. But um, I've got to say I'd recommend it. Certainly feels like something that I was holding off on for a long time. And I had convinced myself that I wouldn't buy it because some point to car probably going to do a better job. But this has a certain amount of just oomph to it and unique weirdness that just, yeah, it fits right in with my collection. It's just the right sort of thing. Obscure, weird, collector pandering, repainty goodness. It feels like it's been born of a good digibash and that's, that's a good feeling, you know? Though it's not 100% what you might want out of a Leo Kaiser, but then, uh, from what I hear, like, the, the really slavish, like, TFC third-party thing probably isn't either. So, you know, there are literally three options for you available if you want a Leo Kaiser toy. One of them costs a grand, the other one probably costs a grand, because it's third-party, you can buy it. Um, and this one, 80 quid, off Kapow. Simple, nice box of six figures. Hasbro, nice solid, good build, nice paint. Can't really go wrong. And I can understand why you might be thinking, oh, it's not quite good enough for me because I really like Leo Kaiser. But I can't reiterate it's enough. It's the only Leo Kaiser you're probably going to get. So, you know, think about that. Check it, you check your bad self. And I'll see you when it's light enough to do a video again. Ha ha! Daylight savings. Crushing me.